welcome to another video from explainingcomputers.com. This time we're going to test out some applications that use artificial intelligence to produce high or super resolution videos from low resolution files. Normally, if we scale up low resolution footage, all that happens is that the pixels are enlarged and the final result therefore lacks clarity and sharpness. For example, if this shot were produced at 240p, then to appear sharp in this 1080p video, it would have to be reproduced at this size. And if we scaled it up to the full size of a 1080p frame, things don't look good as we can see in this comparison. To improve the quality of scaled footage, super resolution machine learning attempts to identify the defining characteristics of a low resolution image or video file. This then allows it to be scaled to a high resolution while still exhibiting clarity and sharpness. In the rest of this video, we're going to test the free trials of two commercial AI video scaling packages as well as a completely free application. But if you want to know more about the computer science behind super resolution and not just see the results of some packages, then there are lots of useful resources out there on the internet and I'll provide links to these in the video description. Right, we're now going to be testing out AVC Labs Video Enhancer AI, Topaz Labs Video Enhance AI, and finally, Wafo 2X extension GUI. Here we can see a bit more detail with the AVC Labs and Topaz Labs programs being commercial Windows and Mac applications that offer watermarked trials, whilst Wafo 2X extension GUI is a Windows program that's free for personal use or it's available for commercial application via a Patreon subscription. Before we begin, it's important to note that AI video upscaling is a pretty processing intensive activity with all of these programs requiring at least eight gigabytes of RAM as well as a modern processor that's as powerful as possible. Here we'll be running our tests on a Windows 11 system that has a hexa-core 10400 i5 CPU, 16 gigabytes of RAM and a two gigabyte GT1030 graphics card. And this means that our system here meets or exceeds the minimum hardware requirements for all of the applications. We also need a test file and I've got that down here. This is a 640 by 360 resolution clip of a Red Admiral butterfly that I shot many years ago and which we're going to scale up to HD. Right, let's run up our first test program, which is AVC Lab Video Enhancer AI. Downloading and installing the trial for this software is very quick and easy. There's no registration required. However, once installation is complete and you click on finish, larger downloads and installations are triggered, which do take a bit of time. But when everything's complete, we can just browse for our test clip. There it is, there's a Red Admiral butterfly and then we're presented with a very straightforward interface. And indeed, this program has got the most straightforward interface of the three we're looking at here. So all we have to do is to first of all, select the feature we're going to use, which here is AI Upscaler, but you can also use this software to track and blur a face, although we're not using that here. And then after that, we select the model we're going to use for our upscaling. And there are four models available, standard ultra, and then standard and ultra with multi-frame. And I've already tried using the standard model, and this was the results I got, which are pretty good, although there's some shimmering top left. And so what I'm going to try here is setting to ultra and multi-frame. And this means the program isn't going to process each frame individually. It'll look ahead to try and avoid things like shimmering. I'm not going to select denoise. I don't think we need that on this clip. I'm not going to select face refinement because I don't think we'll see the face on the, on the butterfly here. I'm not going to change any of the standard video settings, but we can if we wish. I don't need to crop to frame or, or deinterlace. And already I've set here previously the video size to a 1080p, 1920-1080, although you can go all the way up here to 8K. Finally, we just need to set the video format. 
Here I'm using an MP4 container with H.264 encoding, but we can use H.265, we can use ProRes or an uncompressed AVI if we wish. I'm particularly pleased to see ProRes, but we'll stick with an MP4 container H.264 for now. And finally, the save directory is set to be the same place that the source clip is located. The only other settings here are found up in the menu under Guess What Settings, where we can select if we want to use our graphics card or CPU as the AI processor, and we can select maximum memory consumption, which I've left on the default, which is high. So let's kick off the processing. And as this is a trial, it comes up with this screen here, which indicates I've already used one of my free encodes in my previous test, but we'll now continue to do test number two. And there we are, we now have to wait for things to complete. My previous test using the standard model took about seven minutes to process, but this I'm sure will take a lot longer than that. Although we can see here that the results look like they're going to be very good. If we compare what's going on here with that bit of the wing to that, it really is a remarkable improvement. And so we'll just have to be a bit patient. And here I am back again. The process finished in about 58 minutes. So let's view the video output. Let's just open up the folder. Now we can see a new file it's created. And if we open that up, it's looking pretty good. There are still some problems top left, but I think they're better than before. Let's look at a comparison of a clip scaled in a conventional fashion compared to the output of AVC Labs Video Enhancer AI. And clearly our package here is doing a good job. We've got a much, much sharper result. So that's a good first test. And we'll now move on to test out our second package. Next up, we have Topaz Labs Video Enhance AI, where once again, it's very easy to install a trial. Although when we click on try for free, we do have to provide an email address to get a download link. But once we've got the download, the install is very straightforward. So let's just run up the program. We've got it over here. There we are. Gives us a nice picture of the sailing ship. And then just as previously, we can browse to select the clip we want to upscale. There we are, there's our butterfly, and we can select the clip to work on down there. And then the interface here is slightly more complicated. We can select a video quality, low, medium, or high. Various previews come up, as you can see. We can set whether our video was shot progressively or interlaced, or whether it's derived from CG models. We've got a setting for how it deals with video artifacts. Here I've selected none in terms of processing because its initial footage is of good quality. And then under that, we can set the AI model, which we use for the AI upscaling. Where here I'm going to stay on what's recommended, Artemis high quality. And it's worth noting this is already set to just suggested models. If I click up there, we can take off a suggested setting and there's all sorts of models we could apply. So there's lots of potential here to try things out to get the best result. After that, we need to set our output size. As previously, I've set this to 1080p, but we could go all the way up to 8K. And then under that, there's various settings for grain, for video format as previously, where once again, I've gone for an MP4 container H.264 encoding, although we could use ProRes or uncompressed PNG or TIFF frames. Before we start processing, I'll also point out there's quite a lot of uh, preferences here, more than we had in the previous package. We can again set whether we're going to use our graphics card or CPU as the II processor. We've got a memory setting as previously and we can manage all of the different available AI processing models. So let's start processing. Let's make this thing do some work. There we are. And as you can see, it tells us this is a trial. We know that, so it'll add a watermark. That's okay. So we'll click on process with watermark. It brings in the appropriate model and gets on with the task. And there we are, it's finished. So let's now take a look at the final file, which I think is a down here. Oh, look, there we are. It's created us a, a new file, which is that one. And uh, what's it look like? Not bad. Using that particular setting, I think not quite as sharp as we had in the previous test, but we don't have a problem with the, the top left, which is good. And as previously, let's bring up a comparison of a clip scaled in a conventional fashion compared to the output from Topaz Video Enhance AI. And Again, it's pretty good. I still think not quite as good as we saw in the last test, although of course not having the shimmer in the top corner might make the clip a bit more usable. It all depends what you want to do with the final output, and I'm sure it depends greatly on the source material. 
but we'll now move on to test out our final package. Greetings. Here we are with Waifu 2x extension GUI from Aaron Feng, and this is free for public use and makes use of the popular Waifu 2x and other open source super resolution machine learning technologies. And as an aside, if you want to scale up still images, it's well worth checking out this uh, Waifu 2x site. But back with Waifu 2x extension GUI, the download is fairly chunky at 1.8 gigabytes and is a 7z compressed file that needs extracting with 7zip or similar. When this is complete, no installation is necessary as we launch the program by executing its start batch file for which you can create a desktop shortcut if you wish. And as we can see, on first run, the program performs a compatibility test. Here in the package, the interface is tab based with the first tab requesting a donation to support the development of the software. But for now, we'll click on maybe later and go to the home tab and we'll bring in a Red Admiral video clip. There it is, let's bring it in like that. And as you probably gathered, the interface here is the most complex of the three packages we're looking at in this video. There's lots of opportunities to experiment and tweak, but there are also some settings presets. So here, for example, we're defaulting to a 3D real life in large only. We could use medium or highest quality, but we'll stick with the, that one there, the fast one. Although it is worth noting that this software and Waifu 2X on which it is based were initially developed to scale up anime art. And so it's important when you're setting things up to make sure you've selected 3D real life rather than 2D anime if you're upscaling traditional video content. Over here, we can set a resolution. It's picked up the custom resolution I've been using so far. So if I just select the clip, and apply. We can see the resolutions applied up here. I've already set my output folder and over in the video settings tab, we can set the container format we're going to use. As this is a package for personal use only, we only have a choice of MP4 or MKV and we'll stick with MP4. And I'd point out you cannot select the settings for your video output unless you buy the premium version of the software. We also here have a tab for engine settings for the particular neural network model that's going to perform the actual scaling. You can see all of them here, and you can set all of their different characteristics. Lots of things to twiddle with, as I've said. We've got a similar thing for image settings because you can use this software to scale still images, not just video. And we've got some additional settings for the package and the compatibility test that ran on first boot and which indicates everything is working on this computer. So let's go back to home and to start the process. There we are, it's pretty fast on the fast settings, but nevertheless, we will speed on through. And there we are, it's finished. So let's take a look at the final file, which is hopefully in the folder over here. Yes, there we are, there's the uh, way through output. And uh, here we are. And this isn't bad. I'm pretty impressed with the results of this package. I don't think it's quite as sharp as what we had with the AVC Labs product, but it's not bad and it's, it's not watermarked. So let's go across to our comparison of the clip scaled conventionally and in Waifu 2x extension GUI. And here I think I'm going to change my mind if I may. I don't think the result here is as impressive as I just thought it was. It's not particularly better than the traditional scale. So let's use the magic of filmmaking to do this. And now we're looking at a comparison of our traditional scale compared to output from Waifu 2x extension GUI, but output at maximum quality. This took two and a half hours to output compared to nine minutes for what we were just looking at. And here I think the quality is significantly improved. It's worth spending that extra time in processing. Right, here I am back with a four-way comparison of a traditional scale and the output from the three different packages. And I've used here the maximum possible quality I can get from each of the packages. And for Topaz, what I did was to re-output the file, not using different model settings, but output into a ProRes file, because the H.264 file produced by this package, even at its maximum settings, had a rather low data rate. So what are my final conclusions? Well, the first one is that AI enhancement is worth doing. 
all of these three images here are clearly better than what we see in a traditional scale. Particularly if we look, for example, at this edge of the wing, it is so much blurrier here in the traditional scale than it is, for example, in a, well, any of these. But I think it's probably best in AVC Labs, probably next in Weifu, probably next in Topaz. And of course, I need to point out that YouTube's encoding of this video will affect the quality you can see. And if you're not watching this video in 1080p on at least a 1080p screen, you won't necessarily see the subtleties I'm talking about here. But for me, I think the best package is by and large AVC Labs. The quality of the, the inside of the wing, the edge of the wing is better than the other packages. Although potentially maybe Weifu and Topaz, they may be slightly more natural in what they're outputting. I also find it fascinating the way that the original clip has been processed differently by the different models that have been applied. So here, for example, the antenna is blurring into two parts. It's separated into two parts by AVC Labs, but it's definitely one part by Weifu and Topaz. So we've got to be aware that when we start using software like this, it's going to change the nature of the images. Let's let this play as video. There we are, we can see things moving, which is what video needs to do. And I think my final conclusion here is that Weifu 2X extension GUI is a great package to experiment with. You can get very good results if you're prepared to wait quite a long time for the processing. But if you had a large batch of material to enhance, I would go with AVC Labs, purchase a month of their subscription, you'd get things rendered out quicker with slightly higher quality results. Many people, myself very much included, have a large archive of standard definition and other low resolution video files. And so the possibilities opened up by AI video scaling, by super resolution machine learning technology are fantastic. And of course, this technology is just in its early stages. It's just in its beginning. It's gonna get better and better. And it's not impossible to imagine that in not that many years time, it'll become a real-time technology that can be built into graphics cards or monitors or televisions so we can see in better detail standard definition and other low-resolution footage. But now that's it for another video. If you've enjoyed what you've seen here, please press that like button. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. And I hope to talk to you again very soon.